Hello and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hi, hey, hello, my name is Meg and we do crafty things here. So if you like crafty things, please do consider subscribing. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so, so much for subscribing and tuning in to another video. So today we're gonna do a Kumahimo tutorial. I've been wanting to remake that video for a long time because I got a more stable setup. And one of you guys has specifically asked about the cherry blossom pattern that I had in one of my collection videos. So I thought, why not do that pattern today? So that pattern is K10279 off of friendship-bracelets.net. We're gonna tackle it today in a Kumahimo tutorial. So for Kumihimo, you need a Kumihimo disc. We're going to be using a round disc today. There's plates too, we're not dealing with that. Um, this here is a foam one. I got in a pack of embroidery floss from Walmart, but you can hand make these at home. You don't have to go out and buy something. You can use cardboard. You can use like the plastic lid of a yogurt container, whatever. Just make sure your notches are straight across from each other. It's going to make your life so much easier. You don't need to number it like this one is. You can if you want to. I'd suggest maybe marking a notch as like your top one just for reference, but honestly, I don't really use the numbers. So other than your disc, you're also going to need five different colors of embroidery floss. Actually, it can be any kind of colored string. I'm going to use embroidery floss today. You can use yarn, you can use hemp, whatever. So I'm gonna use this light blue for our background color. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna play with the colors a bit. We're gonna do sunflower themes. So this is gonna be a bright yellow for our flower petals, uh, naturally a brown for our center of our flowers. And then the stem and leaves are two tones of green. So I grabbed the darkest green in my collection, which is actually this really pretty mid-tone kind of jewel emerald green. Um, we're gonna use that for our darker tone, which is the stem. And then this lighter, it kind of shows up a little bit darker than it actually is, more pastel -y muted tone green uh, for our leaves. So let's get into how you actually read a Kumihimo pattern. So a Kumihimo pattern looks completely different than a friendship bracelet pattern. It shows up in like a circle. If you haven't seen one before, here one is on the screen. So it kind of reminds me of like a pineapple ring and it goes into fragments or like a piece of pie cut into slices. However you want to picture it, it's essentially these kind of um, slightly triangular pieces and there's a line down the middle with two different colors on each side. Each of those colors in that section represents a string because kumihimo discs are worked in groups of two. So for instance, the top of this pattern has two light yellow. That indicates that there are two yellow strings, so for our uh, petal color. The next one over has a dark yellow, light yellow, that indicates like the center color and the petal, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and cut our strings. I'm gonna go ahead and post the number of strings for each color on the screen here so you can cut them. It's just easier for everyone to see. I'm going to do my wingspan and fold in half, but you can of course just do arms length. I want to do a closed loop on this though. One of you guys had asked me how you can start and end kumihimos. So this is actually the first time I'm going to do a closed loop and braids on a kumihimo. So I folded all of my strings in half, but if you paid close attention to that list, you'll notice there were some that were an odd number of strings. So what I do in those cases is I actually cut a full wingspan of length, just like the rest of these strings here of that color. And then I split it down because embroidery floss is made up of generally six strands of thread. So I half it. I pull out and separate three strands of thread to create half a strand. And then I fold it in half and it creates six strands. So I just kind of loop them together like this. They're not knotted or anything. They're just both folded in half at their midpoints and pulled in the opposite direction. So you end up with a wingspan length of string that's half of each color. So you look like you have one brown and one blue here but the reality is it's a wingspan like string stripped in half and put together so you get six strands of embroidery floss. Same size as everything else so it doesn't screw anything up. But that gives you that loop, um, that full string so you can easily make a loop. Now to do my colored lo covered loop, I think I'm going to use yellow. I don't know, I'm just feeling fresh and vibey with the yellow, all this beautiful sunshine coming in at this filming location. You guys will have to let me know if you like um, what's going on here or not. I'm trying to find the best place to film in this new place. So anyways, to create my closed loop, I take my 
folded yellow at the midpoint and my other strings at the midpoint and I lay the yellow string underneath and then I do a lark's head knot. So I just pull the loose ends through the loop of the yellow. Um, if you've ever knotted onto a dowel or a skewer, it's the exact same knot. We're just doing it onto some string. Then I'm going to throw one half of the string to the other side there and I'm going to send the yellow farthest away from me to that side as well. And then I'm just going to do forward backwards knots until I reach half of the loop size that I want. And then we'll rotate and work on the other side for the other half of the loop size we want so everything stays nice and even. Okay, so now I have reached about half of the loop size I want. So now we're going to physically turn the entire thing around. I'm gonna throw the end of string that I was just working on to the other side and bring over the other half of the string. So this will basically just keep our um, like yellow even and keep our lengths of string even. And I'm just gonna do the same amount of knots on the other side until I have what I think I'm happy with as a loop size. Then I'm just going to obviously fold it to create my loop and I like to at this point just do a square knot with my um, knotting strings that I used to cover the loop there. Uh, I just find it easier. It brings the whole batch together. You can of course just start laying your strings into your disc at this point but I generally even with bracelets I like to do like one or two square knots here. I just find it makes it easier. It brings everything together and I don't have to worry about holding that loop so much. So that's what I did here and now we're going to set up our disc. So I'm going to throw the pattern back up on the screen just to give you a reminder of what that looks like as we set this up. All right, so let's get started. We're going to stick the loop of our strings down the center hole of the disc. This may also just be your knot depending on how you've cut your strings. And I'm going to put number one at the top just for continuity purposes so everyone knows and it makes sense for everyone how we're oriented here. Now, ideally when you pick a pattern, you want to have at least one open notch between each section. So it's super important that whatever pattern you pick, you have way more notches than you have strings in your pattern. All right, with that being said, let's throw the pattern up on the screen here and start setting this up. All right, so looking at our pattern, we can see that top slice of our pie split in two has two of the same yellow color. That means there are two strings that are light yellow. The light yellow for us is just going to be yellow in this pattern. So I've gone ahead and I've done two yellow strings in our top one. Then I'm going to skip a notch and we're going to move to the next section, which we can see from the pattern is our center color and then a yellow. So we skip a notch, then we do our brown and a yellow. Then we skip a notch and we do our yellow and a blue. Skip a notch, blue, and then a green, a light green. Skip a notch and then we do two blue. Skip a notch and then we do a dark green and a blue. Skip a notch, we do a light blue and a yellow. Skip a notch, light green and yellow. Skip a notch, light green and our dark green. Skip a notch, our dark green and our light blue. Makes sense? Each slice of the pie is split into two and each section represents a string and that's how we set up. So this is what it should look like. Now you may have noticed at one point there that I did have to shift my strings. I was hoping to be able to get two notches in between each section, which is ideal because with just one notch, you'll often end up with two sections that get sandwiched together, which we will encounter here, but I'll show you what's going on there. So let's get into folding. So we can see notch number one is directly across from the bottom notch on our pattern. So we should have two yellows and directly across we should see our blue and dark green. So we know everything is set up correctly here. That is looking chef's kiss correct. So with Kumihimo, really you only need the pattern to set up the disc. From there, what you're going to do is you're going to follow a pretty easy saying and it's, if it's left up to me, it's right down to business. I say business, I learned the phrase as fun, but like if it's left up to me, it's right down to fun, but it just, it automatically turned to down to business because like, let's get down to business to destroy the Huns. Did they send me daughters when I asked 
for sons. Like we watch a lot of Disney in this house. I have a small child. So like Mulan reference was immediate. So we're going to say left up to me. It's right down to business. So what this means is holding our disc upright. So with our two yellows, our section one at the top, we're going to go directly down from that to our light blue and our dark green. And we're going to take the leftmost string in this duo. So for us, that's this light blue on the left hand side and we're gonna go left and we're gonna move it up to the left hand side of our topmost group. So that light blue will move from the bottom up to the left hand side of our two yellow. So if it's left up to me, now we're going to go right down to business. So we're going to grab the rightmost string of this group and we're going to go right down and we're going to put it to the right hand side of that green that we just so, so rudely made a single string. Okay. And as we can see right away here, this is what I'm talking about. We've got two sections side by side. If we had had more spaces. Um, we would have been able to avoid that, but unfortunately we don't. So we'll just have to deal with that and be careful when we reach that point. But um, this is what we're working with. So pretty straightforward. Now we're going to turn clockwise. So section one now looks completely different. And we're going to rotate one section clockwise. So rotating clockwise, we now see a brown and a yellow. And directly across from that, we see a yellow and a blue. So that of course lines up with our pattern so that's perfect we know we're in the right spot so remember the phrase if it's left up to me it's right down to business so we're going to grab the leftmost string which is this yellow and we're going to snap it out and we're bringing it up to the left hand side of the group so looking at this we've now made it a trio everything works in twos on a kumihimo disc so we want to make this a two so we're going to grab the rightmost string and we're going to bring it down to business it's going to go to the right hand side of that light blue to make another duo like i said everything works in twos so if you ever see all of a sudden there's a group of three and things aren't adding up try and circle back and figure out where you went wrong because everything should work in twos now we went left up to me, right down to business. Um, we've reached this point. Now we know we need to turn clockwise one more section and we're gonna do it again. Pretty straightforward. We're gonna go left up to me. It's right down to business. So our top section here should be a yellow and a light blue and directly across from that should be a yellow and a light green. That checks out with our pattern so we know we're good to go. So we're going to take the leftmost string of the bottom group, which is our yellow, and we're going to bring it to the leftmost side of the top group. So we should see yellow, yellow, blue. But now we don't like trios in Kumihimo, so we're going to boot the rightmost string here, and it's going to go right down to business. We're going to bring it down to the bottom side of our disc, to the right-hand side of that light green to give it a partner. So it's a duo again. Everyone's happy. Everything's in twos. Everything's looking good everything's looking gucci we're gonna do a one notch spin clockwise here and our topmost string should be a blue and a green and our bottom should be a dark green and a light green we're gonna take the leftmost string and we're gonna bring it up to me and then we're gonna go right down to business and we're just going to keep repeating that turn it again and now we get to our sandwich sections so we're gonna go left up to me but now we've got like five strings here side by side. So we have to pay particular attention to what our group was. Remember our group is two. So we just brought this left string up and then we count in two. So that was the left string of our top group, right string of our top group. So three strings in, we're going to grab that string and we're going to bring it down. Because remember, if there was a space there, that would be the rightmost string of the group at the top. And then we go right down to business. And now we've got our spaces again. Everyone's happy. Turn it again, left up to me, and it's right down to business. And you're just gonna keep repeating that. All right, so let's take a quick pause here because I wanna show you guys how to figure out where you are in your pattern. So you can see this blue string right here looks like it's sitting right on top and the same as the 
um, green string over here. So that tells us that that was the last section that we worked on because those were the strings that just folded across the very, very top. So if you're ever in doubt of where you are in your pattern, always look to see um, what strings were folded across the very top. This may also help if you made a mistake and moved a string to the wrong spot. Like if this string all of a sudden goes over here, um, you'll be like, oh, like I like rotated the wheel in the middle of doing that section and you can fix that. So the only time that's not really helpful is when you're maybe within your first, first round of the pattern because obviously your strings are coming in from all different angles from your main group. But once you've got a couple rows in, that will be your tip and trick to finding where you're at. Otherwise, if you're really, really lost and that doesn't help you, sometimes I find just going backwards, doing the exact opposite of what you do, like left up to me, right down to business, do it the exact opposite um, until you reach a point, and it will take a while, but until you reach a point where you're back to the normal, um, the original pattern string setup, which isn't necessarily like the start of the bracelet, like obviously the strings move and that occurs um, as a recurrent thing throughout the entirety of the pattern. Uh, sometimes I find that helps though reset, figure out where all the mistakes were. And then I know I'm back at a point where there isn't a mistake because it's the original setup and I can go again. So those are just some quick tips on how to um, fix things when you're looking at Kumihimo. But otherwise, we're just going to repeat this left up to me, right down to business for the entirety of the bracelet. And then we'll meet back here and I will show you guys how to pinch this off and finish it out. All right, so it's been a minute. The lighting has changed, but here we are. This is what we're looking like. I have done the length that I want, which is for like an anklet. We've got this really cute sunflower pattern coming out the bottom. Everything is looking good and even. So um, we know there wasn't mistakes there, which is awesome. And I'm so excited to get this off of here. So I think now what you can do is normally I would just pinch the top of the work and pull all the strings out and tie it in a knot. But because I did the closed loop, I'd like to do some like, braids on this. So I'm actually going to pinch it and I'm going to pull out, I think, just half of these strings. And then we're going to braid them and do like two ties on the end of this. So um, it's just going to be easier instead of trying to hold all the strings, I'm going to do half of them so the other half stay in the wheel and like in a place they're set. I don't have to worry about trying to separate them out of my braid and keep control of them. So we're just going to pop out half of these strings and braid them up. So let's go ahead and do that. And literally I'm just pinching underneath the wheel at like the very, very top you can see my nails in the hole there and that's just so it doesn't unravel because essentially making this is like doing a braid so if you let it kind of go too much it can undo which obviously we don't want we just did all that work we don't want to see it unraveling before our very eyes and i'm just kind of pinning the wheel down to the table with my hands and braiding this half i'm just going to do a regular braid now this was a little bit finicky and difficult if I wanted to and what might have been easier and what you can do is pop this out and then tape it down to the table um, and braid it out that way you don't have to try and pin something down while you're braiding but I really didn't want to waste the tape just to do a couple of like two second braids so I am going to struggle a little bit through the trying to pin this down and braid at the same time but that's just me. I don't want to waste my tape for that. So once I've got the length that I want, which for this is quite short because the length of the Kumihimo already actually fits around my ankle. So I don't want to make these ties too, too long, but I'm going to tie this off and then we're just going to pop the rest of these strings out. So um, now that half of it's kind of already pulled out, I'm not too, too concerned about pinching it. I'm still going to hold it there, but we're gonna pull the disc out, just toss it aside and braid up this half so that it reaches the same length, you know, as you do. Nothing too crazy there. This is actually a little bit easier when you're like holding the top. So we're just gonna tie this out and then we're just gonna snip, snip and away we go. Which will lead us with this super cute 
floral kumihimo. The sunflower vibes on this are super sweet. The two-tone vibe I did before with the pinks gave that cherry blossom vibe. You could do white and yellow with this to do daisies too, but I really like how this turned out. So if you guys like this, please give it a big thumbs up and until next time, bye!